Today I'm going to be giving you a side-by-side -side comparison of hardy hibiscus or rose mallow. Hi, I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings and we are going to walk through this entire bed of hardy hibiscus. I'm going to show you the different habits, the different forms, the different colors, and at the end there's a wonderful surprise I've got to show you. So stick around, let's talk hibiscus and check out all these beautiful big dinner plate size bloomers. So as we walk through this garden, things to kind of take into consideration are the different colorations of the flowers, the different colorations of the foliage, as well as the habit of the plants. This is a very mature garden here at Walters Gardens that's showcasing all of their current hibiscus that they carry. So I think it's great to see just side by side what they all look like. Um, we'll notice too, some of them are further along or slower behind others. So we'll be able to take a look too to see like which ones are blooming at what point in the season. So it is the third week in August right now. So let's take a look and see what we've got blooming. Some of them too, I will have to say, I cannot say the name of because they're in trial. So if I skip over one, that might be the reason why. So we are going to start here in the back. This is Mars Madness. This is a variety that's been around for quite some time. Beautiful, big red blooms. Um, dark foliage, but not as dark as others I've seen. Kind of an older variety, and it has been replaced with many other newer, uh, just better habit, better coloration varieties, in my opinion. Next, we have the Valentine's Crush. This is part of the Summerific series. You'll notice with Valentine's Crush, it's a little bit taller than others here that we're going to see today. A little bit more, it's not quite a perfect round ball. It's a little bit elongated, a little bit taller. Valentine's Crush has got beautiful, beautiful, large red flowers with that deep eye in the center there. It's really, I think, a very crisp, clean, red colored hibiscus. Next, we have Vintage Wine. And this one's a little bit smaller than the Valentine. Uh, we have never carried vintage wine, so I don't know a ton about it. Um, so we're gonna go off of what I'm seeing here. The flowers are a little bit smaller than others I'm seeing. Uh, still a nice looking plant, but maybe not quite as impressive as some of the others we'll see today. Next we have, this one's got really deep, 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 dark, dark, dark <laughs> flowers. Uh, this is called Blackberry Merlot. And this one too, we've never grown this before. Uh, typically we'll stick with the Summerific series, the ones from Proven Winners. Although we'll add in a few if we think they're extra special. But with so many in the Summerific series, um, we don't feel like we need to have three or four reds if we have a couple of really great reds from the Proven Winners collection. Uh, this plant here seems to be quite wide compared to tall. It's about five foot tall. But like I said, what really stands out to me is these flowers are so deep, deep red. It's really a very beautiful color of red. Next, we have Holy Grail. And I think Holy Grail is just a gorgeous staple. Um, it's got that near black foliage, the really big, deep red flowers. This is part of the Summerific series. This plant is about four foot tall by about five foot wide or so. This is a very excellent sized specimen. Um, let's go and take a closer look here at the foliage so you can just see how dark it is. Really nice, clean, dark foliage. And I think it pairs really well with the deep red flowers here um, on this particular plant. Tucked in the back there is Midnight Marvel. This is another variety we carried several years ago. Um, things that I'm noticing, again, not a bad plant, uh, but the flowers are a little bit smaller than Holy Grail. I would say these would be two that we would compare one to another. Holy Grail's got a lot darker foliage, which I think is what the goal is with this particular plant, um, where Midnight Marvel doesn't have near the dark foliage that Holy Grail has. Like I said, flowers are a little bit smaller, uh, plants a little bit bigger. Again, overall, not a bad plant, but if I was going to choose one over the other, I would certainly take the Holy Grail. Next is Watermelon Ruffles, and I think this is going to be a new variety at some point. What I'm noticing here is really, really, really ruffled edges here on the petals of the flowers. A very definitive overlap, like that's a huge overlap. And this is actually, I'm going to say, one of a kind. So none of the hibiscus that we're going to see today have near the ruffly look that this particular plant has on it. Uh, this does have more of that olivey 
brightish green foliage so we don't have the dark foliage on this plant but the flower form is truly different and unique uh, compared to any of the other flowers that we're going to see in today's video so something maybe we'll want to watch for in the future next is summerific lilac crush this is one of the earlier blooming hibiscus you can see there's not as much color going on right now uh, because this one was blooming earlier when none of these really had flowers on it lilac crush was really crushing it with a show uh, lilac crush has kind of lavender-ish flowers again the big dinner plate blooms again a, to a very unique coloration we're not going to see any other flowers near like this color in today's collection of hibiscus so it's just it's pink with lavender undertones really a, new, a unique uh, flower color the habit of this plant is a little bit more upright than it is round so it's taller as well so it's about five and a half to six foot tall um, but you can see it's got more of that little bit of an upright habit going on next we have the hibiscus summerific berry awesome and this is one of the ones i'm gonna i don't want to say the original but this was one of the first ones in the proven winter summerific collection uh, berry awesome has really nice dusty rose colored flowers olive green foliage and one thing i should point out with all of these new introductions is they all bloom from what i like to say tip to toe so some of the older varieties of hibiscus all the flowers were just all on top and when those flowers were done the plant was done flowering where we're noticing flowers up and down the stems of all of these plants which in turn results in a longer flower a longer bloom time for these plants another fun fact too with hibiscus flowers is they usually only last for about one or two days before they uh, fall but that's why it's great and important to have plants that have a lot of flowers a lot of buds so that you can enjoy this color for up to probably about four weeks in the garden. Candy Crush is another great variety from Proven Winners, part of the Summerific series. And you'll notice with Candy Crush, it does have that slightly different habit, being more tall than what it is wide. So it's a little bit more of a columnar shape of the hardy hibiscus. Candy Crush has nice bright green foliage. And I don't know, there's just something about this pink color that I find just amazing. Uh, it's got a little bit of magenta to it it's a little bit uh, richer pink and i think that's why this just really draws my eye so if we look again we've got that nice dark eye beautiful pink petals and there's a little bit although it's faint a little bit of veining of the dark that's kind of extending into the petals of each of those flowers so this is where i'm saying it's important so you've got the flowers on the top but also the flowers are going down the stem which just means you're going to have more flowers and more enjoyment out of a plant. Next one here, this one is full of blooms, but it's not even started blooming yet. This is called Summer Carnival. And what's unique about this particular plant is it's got variegated foliage. Let's go in and take a closer look. So you can see it's kind of a bi or tri colored effect with the green, the uh, white and then a, just a little hue there of kind of a dusty pink on the edge but this one has not even started flowering we have a bud right there so I'm not even sure what color this is because we don't carry it um, based off of the bud I'm gonna guess it's kind of maybe a, a red or a deep dark pink uh, but look at all the buds I mean this plant once it wakes up it is going to just shine with color Summer in Paradise. This is a variety that is not a proven winter variety, but we do carry this particular one. And I think the reason why this one is one we've added to the collection, even though it's not a proven winners, is because this has one of the largest flowers of any of the flowers I've seen so far as we've walked through this bed. Summer in Paradise has the green, olive green colored foliage, but check out that bloom. That is a giant. Nice overlap petals, really a crisp, clean, bright pink coloration. Lovely plant. Let's shake up the color a little bit with a new variety. This is called All Eyes on Me, part of the Summerific series. This will be new in 2024. And let's take a closer look. So this has that green foliage, beautiful overlap petals, nicely kind of ruffled. You can see how that eye extends and kind of bleeds out into um, the petals really a very prolific bloomer a little bit more on the compact size so it's not super tall maybe 
three and a half, four foot or so tall. So a little bit more compact than some of the others we've seen today. Next we have Evening Rose, which is another variety with a dark black foliage. Now I need to be careful because when I say the foliage is black, somebody's going to say no it's not, uh, but it is. It's really one of the richest, darkest foliages out there. Nice bright pink blooms, so I think the blooms and the foliage really contrast each other nicely. Uh, this variety is about four foot tall by about five foot wide, so a little bit more wide than what it is tall. Big blooms, really a beautiful plant. We sell a lot of this one, and I think it's because of the dark foliage and the bright flowers. I think people just really love the contrast of color that this plant is giving. Next, we have Perfect Storm, and Perfect Storm features dark foliage. There's a lot of that black coming through along with some of that deep green. Perfect Storm is one of the varieties that have been in the Summerific series for quite some time now. It's quite a large plant. It's about four and a half to five foot tall, and it's probably at least six foot wide. Beautiful flowers, kind of a fun pattern going on. The nice magenta eye, and then the, the petals are white, and you're seeing a little bit of that pink kind of bleeding out into it. Uh, so if you're looking for a bigger hibiscus in the sense of a bigger plant, Perfect Storm definitely is covering a lot of ground here in the garden. Next, we have Hibiscus Spinderella. This is also part of the Summerific series. And we'll go in and take a closer look. This has the olive green foliage, the beautiful kind of uh, pinwheel or spinning looking uh, flowers, kind of white with a little twist of pink to it. And I'm gonna actually show you this one next to Perfect Storm um, because the flowers, I think you, not seeing them right next to each other, you might feel that they're um, very similar. So let's go, here's Perfect Storm. And here is Spinderella. So that way you can kind of see the difference in the flowers a little bit. Similar, but definitely very different looking. Next, we have Starry Starry Night. This is a variety that we've carried in the past that we no longer carry. Um, it's more compact, you can see, than Spinderella or than Perfect Storm. It does have darker foliage than either of those. But you can kind of see the flowers are similar-ish looking. So if we had to choose and drop one, we did choose to drop the Starry Starry Night. Again, because we are just so impressed with the Summerific Hibiscus. Next, we have Cherry Chocolate, part of the Summerific series. And this one, too, has really, really big flowers. Beautiful blooms on it. Again, that bicolor bloom with the white and the pink. This, I would say, for the last four we've just looked at, this definitely has the biggest flowers on it. So really impressive bloom size. The habit of this plant, it's a little bit more compact, about three and a half, maybe pushing four foot tall and about four to five foot wide. Here we have the ballet slippers, part of the Summerific series. Ballet Slippers is about four foot tall, and right now this particular one is about six foot wide. Uh, ballet Slippers, I would say, is the most, let's say, daintiest or fairest of the bicolors. You'll see what I'm saying when we get closer. Really bright green foliage here on Ballet Slippers. Very white flowers with just a kiss of pink, just a kiss of light pink at the tips. So definitely it does have that pink and white going on but the pink isn't super predominant in this plant. And I think it just gives it, like I said, just kind of a soft, maybe a light feeling. Uh, here's a flower that's opening. You can see the pink is just a little bit more predominant as it's opening, but yeah, as it's fully open, it kind of fades a little bit. Hibiscus buds are really cool. So even before the flowers open, I think they're just such, they just add such extra interest to the plant. Next one here is Dark Mystery. I am not familiar with this plant at all. Um, so what I can tell you about it is it's got uh, dark foliage. The leaves on this one though are not near as serrated as uh, the others we've seen. So most of the others kind of look like a maple leaf type flower uh, leaf form. So let's just go in and show you how it's got the different um, stick, you know, sticking out there. Where these leaves 
are just kind of a one singular type of leaf. So, and, I, I, and I'm saying this all wrong on how I should be describing these, but I think you'll get the gist of what I'm saying here. Um, beautiful flowers, beautiful dark foliage, unique, different looking leaves. Um, but like I said, I'm not too familiar with this particular one. Next, this is a unique coloration. This is the Hibiscus Summerific French Vanilla. And this one here is just starting to bloom. So we're not seeing a lot of color on it yet because it's a little bit later than the others. Uh, but where this one is unique is it has really, the vanilla really is, is a perfect name for it because they're creamy white blooms. So I wouldn't call them yellow because that wouldn't be a very fair description, but a creamy white I think is a, is a good way to describe the color blooms. The flowers are a little bit smaller than some of the others we've seen so far, uh, but the flower color is truly unique. And then with that nice magenta eye, I think that really, really lets this plant pop or these flowers pop in the garden. Next we have Angel Eyes, and Angel Eyes is an earlier bloomer, so we're not seeing a lot of color right now. Uh, and the reason I know this is an earlier bloomer is because there is not hardly any buds left on this plant, where French Vanilla, you can see all the buds still remaining. So that's why I can tell if it's earlier or later blooming. Uh, let's go in though and find a flower on Angel Eyes, because I think this one is kind of cool as well really a deep dark eye that bleeds out quite heavily into the the white petals so it's it's a striking flower but definitely an earlier bloomer edge of night hibiscus gal you know i keep saying this one is the best this one is the best but this one is by far the most compact that we have seen so far this one's only about three foot tall by about five foot wide and very, very dark, dark foliage on it. So if we go in, we are not hardly seeing any green. This is, and this is definitely, I'm going to say a true black. And we're not, we're not seeing any green. The only green we're seeing is from the flower buds, but the leaves themselves, they are all such a rich, dark black, a beautiful, bright pink flowers not quite as predominant of an eye there in the center, um, but that eye does kind of bleed out into the veining of the petals. But this is definitely a nice compact hibiscus. If you don't have a space for something really tall, this particular one is nice and compact, although it is a little bit more on the wide side. And the one I promised to show you that we're really excited about is new for 2024 summerific cookies and cream. This is the first black leafed hibiscus with a white flower that has no um, magenta eye. Very compact in size. So this one is maybe two and a half foot tall right now by about three foot wide. Crisp, clean, white blooms, no eye there in the center. Really nice, deep, dark black foliage. And let's just go take a look at this from all angles because this is really a very unique plant. We have not seen any fully white flowered hibiscus yet in this trial. And this is definitely something different and unique that we are excited for and will be offering in 2024. Summerific cookies and cream. A few important things to point out about the hardy hibiscus or rose mallow is they are hardy in zones four to nine. They like to be grown in full sun locations and they are a native perennial. They are deer resistant, although I'm gonna put a disclaimer there because we have some deer browsing in our Northern Michigan garden. And on occasion, I do notice that they eat the flower buds, but I have not noticed them eating the foliage. So deer resistant, but I'm gonna say that carefully because they may or may not browse on your plants. So if you are looking for something that has huge, huge blooms, certainly makes an impact in the garden. I mean, you can see all this beauty here behind me. The, the hibiscus, the rose mallow are definitely one of those plants that will have your neighbors talking if you like to be kind of the person in your yard or in your neighborhood that has all the cool plants. One other thing to point out with hardy hibiscus is they are one of the latest things in the spring to emerge. So if it's the end of May, beginning of June, and you have not seen anything come out of the ground yet, don't get worried. They are the latest things to emerge. I promise 
um, that once they do emerge, they're going to be quick to grow and will be flowering by August. So really, it takes them about two months or so to go from poking through the ground to the big, big beautiful blooms that we're seeing below. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. If you're new to our station, we invite you to subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings.